So yes, today I'm going to be giving you guys an overview on Southern Gold and uh, our work here in South Korea. It's a fantastic story and we're looking forward to uh, sharing that with everyone. So next slide, thanks. Usual disclaimers, I will be making some forward-looking statements. So Southern Gold, we're a South Korean country play, 100% focus here, working in South Korea. It's a fantastic place to be exploring. It's a frontier destination. It's a bit off the radar compared to a lot of other places in Asia, underexplored by modern exploration methods. We're targeting around about a million ounces gold deposits, um, exploring for gold and silver. And in 2022, we'd expanded our portfolio to include the search for the lithium and rare earths. We saw a real opportunity there as well as copper. We're really the only uh, serious exploration company working here in South Korea, so we've got that first mover advantage. It's a fantastic jurisdiction. It's a modern mining jurisdiction. We've got an active drilling program. We're drilling underway, and I'll touch on that in a moment. And we have a fantastic team, highly experienced, track record of discovery, great people. And we're getting increasing interest from potential JV partners and government agencies in the work that we're doing, which is, which is really fantastic and great for us. And the other uh, great news really was just in the process of acquiring a battery commercialization company called Iron Drive to complement our critical minerals uh, research program here and leverage our presence here in, in South Korea. So yeah, thanks, next slide. We have a very experienced and wonderful board that are totally committed to the program here in South Korea. Got a lot of experience in exploration, Doug Kerman there who really needs no introduction. Great uh, history with Ivan Ho finding the, uh, assisting in the OU Tolgoi deposit discovery in Mongolia. Um, BJ Kim, Executive Vice President of Samsung Australia, uh, great connections here in, in South Korea. Michael McNeely, the CEO of the Metal Tiger, one of our larger investors, has a great experience in depth in, in capital markets. And our chairman, Peter Banford, who's a, a mining engineer with a fantastic pedigree in Australia um, and a really great board and wonderful team to, for me to work with. The next slide, thanks. Just a snapshot of our capital structure, market cap around about 6 million. Uh, we're very well cashed up, around about, uh, around about uh, yeah, what do we say, there are about 3 million in cash at the moment. We're a major shareholder in uh, LSE listed uh, BMV, which is a small boutique miner. It's all up because that's the total cash and share position of around about 6.4 million. So a very strong balance sheet going forward. Next slide, thanks. So really South Korea is a great address for, for mineral deposits. We're part of, uh, I guess, the Northeast Asian merging world-class province, which hosts a whole variety of different styles of deposits. And South Korea is really part of that, part of that geology. In fact, uh, South Korea hosts one of the world's largest tungsten mines called Sandok, which is just in the process of being reopened. We also share geology with the South China Craton, so uh, obviously really great potential for rare earth elements and, and lithium as well. And South Korea, look, it's just a fabulous place to be exploring and working. It's a powerhouse economy. It's number 10 in the world. It's got a very small mining industry, but it's a net importer of minerals, uh, no mining royalty. But it's a huge uh, smelter and refining uh, destination for the world. So a very fascinating place to be working. And it's a global leader in the lithium battery an EV manufacturing um, place. And right now the country is going through a major transition to these clean energy technologies. And so we really wanna be a part of that future going forward. Next slide, thanks. And in many ways, South Korea has really been overlooked for a lot of its mineral exploration, especially for gold, because there's no real modern exploration going on here at the moment. It's got a history of gold mining going back to about a thousand BC. But it wasn't until the late 80s and early 90s that the recognition of these high-grade epithermal deposits was known. And indeed, it was recognised by our board member, Doug Kerbin with Ivanhoe when they were exploring here in the late 80s, early 90s. And they found a number of very interesting high-grade deposits, fantastic bonanza grades, you know, silver grades, gold grades, over 100,000 grams per tonne. And in fact, the Unsan mine in 2002, the Unsan mine um, ended up being a direct shipping ore. So just a fantastic high-grade deposits. So these are great targets, great projects, because they obviously have very small footprints, and these are the sorts of things that we're exploring for, these epithermal high-grade deposits. Uh, next slide, thanks. So this is one of our major projects called DOCON. It's one of these uh, epithermal high-grade gold-silver deposits. It was mined sporadically over the 1970s over several different uh, levels. Around about 2 million ounces of silver produced, maybe 40,000 ounces gold, but again, very high grades. I think we had surface grades gold returning up to 13,000 grams per tonne silver and up to 80 grams per tonne gold. So a fantastic project. And uh, we've been searching for extensions to the main mine along the main block on structure. 
We just did some drilling in recent weeks, starting back in March into the main structure and also at our Thorn Zone. Um, we hit the main structure. We didn't get any significant results, unfortunately. Didn't find any additional shoots at the stage, but got some really interesting minimization in the hanging wall, which was uh, something quite interesting. And the drilling definitely did highlight the fact that it's a very large epithermal system. So we're going to be continuing uh, exploring along that main structure. We see some really interesting analogs with, with Vera Nancy in Queensland, but it's an exciting project and certainly a lot more work required. Next slide, thanks. And our other one of our new projects that we're actually drilling right now is our Gossong uh, Copper Gold uh, Silver Project. It covers around about 70 square Ks. It's in an historic copper mining district in South Korea. There's been limited exploration here for gold, a lot mostly for copper. But this represents an exciting uh, new target type, the Southern Gold. It's a bit deeper in these sort of mineral systems. It's uh, more intrusive related. That's probably the kind of thing that's driving the high grade systems like Doc Ong. And we see good potential for intrusive related gold systems with analogies to deposits like uh, Kidston, Timbara, and Mount Wright, and indeed Pogo. And we're drilling right now that uh, picture on the bottom left there. That's a, a magnetic target combined with soil geochemistry that we're drilling our Bupo anomaly. That's a really great target, and we're doing that right at the moment, and we're really very excited to see the results coming out of that. We've got four holes uh, underway there, around about 900 metres, and we should have those assays around about late June and July, so we'll be letting people know about that. But a fantastic project. Next slide, thanks. Well, South Korea is going through a major uh, energy transition to clean energy technologies, and that hasn't been lost on us while we've been here in South Korea. I might add that I'm actually based here in South Korea. And uh, South Korea really needs a lot of uh, lithium and rare earth, and it has a lot of offtake agreements with, with Australian companies such as Pilbara Minerals for lithium, ASM for rare earth elements. There's a huge push to get, uh, to get these critical minerals into South Korea. It's looking at uh, diversifying its supply chain, obviously with geopolitics in, in the area, so hence uh, getting strong links with countries like Australia. And so we saw this as an opportunity to, to look at potential domestic supply of lithium and rare earths here, here in, in South Korea. And at the same time, there's a massive push to develop a whole lot of new uh, battery plants. The government's spending around about $35 billion over the next five years to build new lithium battery plants. I mean, it is the global powerhouse for EV development and, and battery technology. And also is a major, major global leader in recycling of lithium batteries. So a very, very exciting and developing time here in South Korea on the critical minerals front. Uh, next slide, thanks. So as a result of that, we've really developed a fantastic, new and exciting lithium exploration portfolio based on a whole bunch of historical government data. And we put together a really good bunch of projects, maybe five or six projects covering around about nearly 500 square Ks. Uh, we're seeing interesting lithium anomalies and stream seeds and soils up to 400 ppm. There's, again, there's limited prior exploration and no drilling. So really good geology. Some of our projects, one of our projects is next to the Biome Lithium Mine, which is uh, sitting in a national park at the moment that produced lithium back in the 1940s to 60s. So there is history of LCT pegmatite mines here in the area. So we see that as fantastic prospectivity as part of exploration. We've got a very aggressive fieldwork program underway right now. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of assays there. You can see some, some rocks on the table there photographed uh, back in April. And we've got some assays pending and really interesting looking geology. And we, we're looking to want to be drilling these targets sometime in 2024. So a very exciting portfolio. Uh, next slide, thanks. We put together two really exciting uh, rare earth projects as well. There's only two known unmined rare earth deposits uh, here in South Korea, and we've got ground right next to them. Indeed, some of these deposits actually poke into our ground, which is quite exciting. Uh, the Chungju rare earth deposit covers around about 68 square Ks, and uh, it actually is an alkaline granite deposit. Um, so that's a very, very interesting looking thing. And the other project that we've acquired is our Jungnam carbonatite deposit, which is next to the um, next to the Hongchon rare earth deposit, which is a really fantastic, huge thing. It's, I can't mention the figures because they're not drop dependent, but very good uh, TREO grades coming out of that deposit. You can see they're up to 19%. Again, we've been very active exploring these areas. We've got a whole bunch of assays in at the moment for the work that we've been doing at Jung Nam. We hope to be making a release uh, next week on those assays, but we think we've got something uh, really, very exciting, the tiger by the tail with these projects, and we'll be advancing these. And we're looking to do all these projects around about September, October this year before the winter sets in. Next slide, thanks. Perhaps one of our most exciting things that's happened in recent weeks is the acquisition of Iron Drive Technologies. They are a battery commercialization company based in Australia. 
We did a share placement recently, a private placement for around about two and a half million dollars. Of one point two million was part of that for um, for Iron Drive. That's a strategic investment by Southern Gold, and we saw that as an opportunity to basically add shareholder value and diversify our portfolio. And it really complements our lithium and rare earth work that we're doing here in South Korea, and capitalises on our presence here in South Korea in the growing battery technology and recycling market. Now, Iron Drive have a strategic relationship uh, with the University of Adelaide. And it really is leveraging off that fantastic investment into the next generation battery research team led by world-class laureate professors. Um, that we've got a reputation second to none. Professor Jin Jin Kwao was a 2021 South Australian Scientist of the Year. So these guys are world leaders in their, play, in, in their area. So it's fantastic to be part of that. Now this agreement with the university provides IDT the rights to exclusively license and purchase the intellectual property of three commercialization ready technologies that the university has developed. And I'll talk to those next, next slide, thanks. So the three projects that Iron Drive will be commercializing, the first one is aqueous sodium batteries. These are basically used for energy uh, grid storage. The team have developed a, a basically a low cost battery that's much more efficient. It doesn't use a lot of critical minerals and it's fantastic for um, the grid energy storage next generation. The second project are safer lithium metal batteries. These basically have a much longer life, they're much more efficient, and they don't operate at high temperatures, so a potential game-changing uh, lithium battery for EVs. And the third project is the team have invented a fantastic solvent, which is super efficient at recycling uh, material from lithium batteries. It's basically non-toxic and it's really cheap and much more effective at getting the metals out, so a real game-changer there. So these are three fantastic projects that Iron Drive will be working very hard to commercialize over the next 12 months. Uh, next slide, thanks. So going forward, we've got a very busy time of news flow and activity. We're still drilling our bus on project. We hope to get those assays out. Next slide, but that's looking great. We're gonna be working up our rare earth targets. We're drilling around about September, October uh, is before winter sets in. We're gonna be exploring very hard on our ground, looking for um, LCT pigmatites and really want to get those uh, targets worked up for, for drilling early next year. And as I said, our Iron Drive team, they're going to be exceptionally busy accelerating the commercialization program of those three projects. So a very exciting time for Southern Gold. Appreciate everyone's time uh, hearing about us. So yeah, thanks very much. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Robert. Uh, we've got a couple of questions here, more than a couple, actually. Um, if, just the first slide, you had two significant shareholders represented about 35%. Can you give us a little bit of background on who that is? Sure. Uh, Metal Tiger is our, is our major shareholder. In fact, uh, Michael McNeely is the CEO of Metal Tiger. They're a, an investment company. Um, they, they are a big supporter of us. Uh, the other major shareholder is Awala, which is a, 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 a firm held by Quentin Flannery, and uh, they own about 40% of us. They've been a long-standing supporter of the stock uh, going forward and been very helpful in terms of um, putting uh, support for the company going forward. And, and we've seen this trend in, in a lot of our webinars, actually, where gold companies are moving into rare earths and, and potentially lithium. But you've also got a, a battery technology company uh, that you've just taken an equity position in. What kind of expertise do you bring to the equation? And is, is the risk that you, your company is actually doing too much? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. These things are always a bit of a calculated risk and you have to have to weigh them up. The, the main thing is, is the Iron Drive team are the leaders in the exp uh, expertise in this with JC Tan. They have a lot of experience in this. So the involvement of the, of the Southern Gold team won't, won't be as high. We'll have a, a governance and a management oversight of the project going forward. I'm not an expert in that area by any means. I do have some experience in my previous job with GNS Science in New Zealand, working with their um, high technology, uh, battery technology research in that area. So I do have some experience in that area. And yes, we have to we have to manage the programs going forward. It will be results driven, but certainly we, we want to make sure that exploration maintains uh, is our main focus going forward. But certainly, it is a matter of balancing the risk across the portfolio and allocating the capital where we can get the best results for shareholders going forward. And, and in terms of that, uh, allocating that capital, where, where's the focus? Is the is the focus on gold to kind of bring in revenue, or how, how do you how do you find the right mix? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say probably roughly probably about a third, a third, a third. A third of our uh, our activity or revenue would be generated towards gold, silver exploration, the other third to the critical minerals, and probably a third uh, next year to the uh, iron drive project. 
going forward. So yeah, around about a third each at this stage. But as I said, it's all results driven. Where we get the best results that's over the next 12 months, that's where we'll certainly be allocating the capital. And, and what about the cost to drill in uh, South Korea compared to Australia? How, how does it compare? Actually, it's, um, it's, it's pretty cheap. There, as I say, there isn't much of an exploration industry here, but we're drilling around about, I think we're looking at around about maybe, you know, under $200 a metre for diamond. So, you know, it's exceptionally cheap. So actually the exploration costs here compared to other jurisdictions are, are pretty favourable. And, and just finally, back back to the uh, battery business iron drive. Um, South Korea obviously has its own battery chain. It's it's significant player in the, in the game. How, how are you going to kind of make inroads into that market with, you know, your investment in iron drive? Yeah, that's a good question. We, we have good connections in the business side of things through here in South Korea. Um, one of our board members, BJ Kim, uh, Executive Vice President for Samsung Australia, has good connections in that space. So we do have good good connections there. And also um, JC Tan and, and um, the rest of the Iron Drive team, they know a lot of people here in South Korea. So we will be actively reaching out to these people. We've got meetings lined up in other places as well. So there's going to be a pretty concerted effort on that front through the Iron Drive team to, to reach out and connect with um, people here that, that indeed they, they already know.